This week on Nations Business, we highlight how communities in Fiji are combating the effects of climate change and are being empowered to adapting to this changing weather phenomenon. Across the globe, the constant changing weather pattern is leading many communities in Fiji to experience weather changes such as sea level rise, drought and changes to ecosystems. Climate change and uh, disaster uh, are two of the major issues that the whole world is trying to, to address and of course uh, uh, minimize the risks uh, involved as well. Uh, for us in Fiji, we are living in a vulnerable uh, region and we have also uh, paid the price uh, over uh, previous years in terms of disaster and climate change effects. Uh, therefore, it is uh, uh, critical that we look at solutions and look at how we can minimize the risks involved. And climate change has a widespread impact that affects all sectors of the economy, from health, infrastructure, water resources, agriculture, forestry and fisheries. The issues that they are facing is actually inundation, uh, basically flooding, um, particularly for villages that are very close to the rivers and also the ones that are close to the sea. Um, so that is basically one very big issue that Fiji is actually facing. The burden of this impact is being shouldered more by Fiji's rural populace because of their dependence on vulnerable sectors such as agriculture and tourism for their livelihood. Because of the El Nino, El, El Nino effects, uh, El Nino, El Nino effects, we'll probably start seeing one season more cyclones, the next season drought. So we'll see a more uh, polarizing effect. So all of our crops that we grow here in Fiji need to be resistant to these types of uh, impacts. Uh, uh, weather pattern, I think from last 10 years have been changed. Uh, weather is not good at all times. Before, before we had good good weather, just because of global global warming, is causing the rise in sea level, and uh, the low lying fields are being filled with sea water. Uh, places where cane was growing some time ago, now the soil has been saline. We can't uh, grow anymore. If there is a drought, it continues for months, which affects the growth of cane. We are not able to make that much sugar, just because of the weather pattern. You can see, when the drought comes, I have planted all along that one. But when the drought came, it damaged the ratoons, and the ratoons didn't come up, didn't grow. Meet Naresh Shankar, a 53-year-old man from Tavyuni, the garden island of Fiji, who is currently working on a project of his own to help combat the impact of climate change through forest conservation and the preservation of an endangered species which is all part of reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. I'm trying to get a project done mm. that I've been conserving for 35 years. Like uh, at the present moment we have like lost the values of our ecological of the forest but we are going on the money side of it, the economical side eh? but for me conserving for 35 years now i have managed to make a natural habitat for the birds over here and the birds are there medicinal plants are there and trying to have a ridge to reef been trying for 10 years for have a marine farm to have the major ridges to work together for Naresh, preserving an endangered species like Munendamu or orange dove habitat is not as simple as establishing protected areas. This orange dove is endemic to Taviuni with a few only existing. It's coming good from my point of view, but like while developing developed countries has gone past the curve, they're back to where we were 50 years ago, we in the developing countries are making the same mistakes they had made, not learning by the mistakes, taking the good one, but it will take time for the local 
community to know about that. So it's still a uphill battle. For Shankar, having a natural habitat is one way in trying to lessen the impact of climate change that the island is facing. So I could cultivate to make money, which I'm not doing that. Like they just saying that, as President John F. Kennedy had said, eh, it's not what the country can do for you, what you can do for your country. So that's what I'm trying to have. This is an asset for Fiji, not mine. Despite their invaluable importance, forests and mangroves are rapidly declining due to agriculture, logging and increased economic activity. This decline not only affects those who directly rely on forests for survival, but everyone. So I have a regrowth of 25 acres close to the homestead, which I've managed to make a natural habitat for the birds around over here. I have the birds, uh, 30 varieties of seasonal edible fruit, medicinal plants all around the regrowth. Further up, I'm doing a farming and it's an integrated farming practice which I undertake locals to teach them so you can do integrated farming practice and have uh, green firewood, we can cut it today and burn it tomorrow and further up I have got a virgin rainforest, what Fiji was 50 years ago. I'm trying to have this as a family heritage as well as a national heritage and the value of a national forest which I have is worth more than two million dollars if I cut and sell it which I don't want to do that. Like, you know, it's what I can give back to the country, yeah. that will be known. Money is nothing. <laughs>Pacific Island state, Fiji is currently undergoing institutional reviews to ensure sustainable economic and social development. And climate change has been identified as a challenge to sustainable development, having critical impacts on key areas such as agriculture, land use, forestry, fisheries and water. And then there are issues of food security, uh, there is issue of health, and climate change can affect tourism, uh, particularly when uh, we have a lot of coastal erosions affecting our beaches and so on. And even the changes in climate could impact on the health. Um, and that is something that we need to be aware of. Um, uh, we also have cases of malaria. Um, and then, you know, malaria basically thrives in the warm. Uh, if the warmer temperatures, basically, maybe Fiji could be getting malaria into the future. That is something um, that is now already in the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and so on. Uh, if we have warmer temperatures, these are things that could actually happen. So we need to basically guard against those. Important considerations have also led to the inclusion and empowerment of youths, enabling them to responsibly manage their resources and renew their environment. communities to be able to prepare for a disaster so that when a disaster strike a particular village is already prepared uh, being able to know what they are able to do rather than just always relying on uh, service providers uh, for you it's not only to be used but to be involved and for Fiji we welcome the involvement of our youth because uh, in terms of sustainable development it's addressing the needs of today and also without compromising those of the future. According to Mr. Seri Ratu, Fiji is one of the Pacific Island nations which has put in place mitigation measures that not only enables communities to live with the changes to climate and their surroundings, but also understanding what the change means. Uh, in making comparisons with our uh, neighboring countries and those within the region, uh, I can say that um, we are doing quite well. Uh, but then there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. We don't have to be complacent. Uh, we need to uh, keep working uh, and of course look at uh, areas in which uh, we can either reduce or transfer or manage the risks uh, involved so that uh, we can uh, also uh, minimize uh, the damages and of course the, the economic effects as well. Government allocates funds separately for disaster risk management and investment to minimize future costs on disaster risk reduction. Earlier this year, 
government relocated Wunindongolo village in Vanua Levu in the Vagondrove province. With sea level rising, soil erosion and intensifying floods, the villages of Wunindongolo have been forced to move to higher ground. Nation's Business had the opportunity to visit the old village site by the sea, which is no longer habitable. <laughs> Throughout 2012, these villages have been in the process of moving from their current home village, one of the very first village relocation projects in Fiji. We talked with the villagers about their feelings, hopes and fears as they become one of the very first villages in Fiji to be relocated as a result of the effects of climate change. Yeah, Many years ago, the villagers received help from the Japanese government, which funded their seawall building program. But that too was destroyed by the waves and rising water levels. Those days are now gone, as the sea and the river near the village are quickly reclaiming parts of the village. In most cases, these individuals and their communities contribute very little to climate change. Yet, they are feeling the proverbial heat in a much more profound and potentially devastating way. But for others, everything that comes along with relocation, including property rights, lack of finances, the inevitable culture loss, and a host of other complex problems is a much more traumatic issue which is faced globally. The middle of the village is riddled with holes caused by the rising water and sinking foundations mark the places where the houses once stood. With government's assistance, the villagers all agreed to relocate to this site, not more than a kilometer from their soon to be old village site, but on a higher ground and better yet, right next to the road to Savusavu.
Gay na numi mai na koru untung lo ay na kena to kita kena kena wasasan ye na uwa. Au wa mi nabina ka pakale uwa na matentu ko meli uta kena ngono ko. Ni na numi ke mami. Ara mi to kita kena koru ngo ay na koru. The village relocation project has been going on for the past nine months and the villagers, with the help of government, agreed to provide the wood which the houses at the new village site will be built with. The old village site had 19 homes, but the villagers have now completed 30 new houses at the new site. According to village headman Silosi Ramatu, this was after the villagers decided that older and younger couples should own a home of their own. The relocation project cost government more than $300,000, which is directed towards buying building materials, constructing fish ponds, building livestock paddocks, and providing support for the villagers' pineapple farm. Government has also built a new water source and water tanks at the new village site. And the second phase of the project is building of a community hall and a church for the village. Kemal bisa atuki bantu kita. Dulu kau bola lomba, mabe gay atuki. Yang saya biu kene tu mai lah. Rani mabe tumbu tumbu. Oi rera mona taka, tau mana? Betul kita kita ni bangkur. Kau yang ubah ni benda kecik ni nama tentu. Enak ni mabe nanumi, mabe tu kita kita ni mabe koro. In a collective attempt to enhance disaster resilience, the Ministry of National Disaster and Management Office, together with various stakeholders, organized a platform to discuss sustainable programs on disaster risk management and climate change in Fiji. We need to create favorable opportunities and directions for growth in the country. For too long we have been working in silos and separately with little commitments to integrate our efforts. I am positive that after these four days of deliberations, you have found the pathway to reconcile these separations. Fiji has taken the initiative as the lead Pacific Island country in implementing its green growth framework. This framework is aligned to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which was also signed by Fiji in the early 1990s. It is from this framework that Fiji, the very first of all Pacific Islands, has taken the bold initiative in pushing the concept of the Green Growth Framework a tool that supports development that is sustainable and is a vital component for Fiji given the increasing population, improved economic growth, high urban migration and the need to ensure that people are at the centre of development. And this is one of the uh, best platforms uh, in which we can bring all the agencies together. Uh, it is critical for Fiji uh, in terms of funding because uh, we have uh, overlaps, we have duplications uh, in as far as uh, regulations and uh, policies uh, is concerned. And we need to bring the two together because you know, cannot deal with one in isolation. Uh, uh, secondly, in terms of uh, technical expertise, uh, we may lack technical expertise in, uh, in a lot of places and that is why we need to bring the two together so that we can get uh, the technical expertise from our friends and partners. Uh, and of course through the regional and uh, global uh, uh, networks uh, that we uh, interact with and most importantly funding as well. Most of these activities involve a lot of money and we need, uh, as we bring the two together, hopefully we will get a lot of funding assistance as well. Well, basically, after we hopefully at the end of this particular forum, uh, platform, we will have um, a pathway forward in terms of uh, a strategic uh, uh, plan of uh, bringing together climate change and disaster management as one uh, strategy uh, to guide 
uh, Fiji into the future of dealing with disasters and issues of climate change. After the 2012 uh, floodings, uh, a couple uh, of uh, quite a number of uh, villages in the Western Division have been uh, affected badly in terms of uh, floodings and also uh, landslides. Eh? Uh, now what uh, we are doing uh, right now is trying to assist in terms of uh, relocation and uh, adaptation. Luke Moroi Valo says government is working on relocating 10 villages in the Western Division which are prone to floods. One project will cost uh, almost a million dollars or over a million dollars because you need to build new homes, you need to build uh, to provide uh, water supply provide access, sanitation, uh, these are very, very critical in, uh, in a relocation uh, project. Eh? Most of these areas are also home to Fiji's rural populace. We are working with our land use planning section as well as our crop and livestock section in trying to develop as well as uh, we could say document best cropping and best uh, livestock uh, guidelines which could be used by the farmers in the, in the upper catchment. Uh, also at the lower catchment we were working with communities uh, that were very vulnerable so we were working with uh, villages, settlements that were near to the sea or near to the river system. We, what we did was we built their capacity, we put them into groups, we trained them, we, what we call is a community disaster management committees, we developed their response plans and if a disaster strikes they would have a coordinated effort. The policies adopted by government and its successful development plans recognizes the critical importance of managing the environment and natural resources to ensure social and economic prosperity. Nations Business, together with participants of a natural disaster and climate change workshop, visited Cuba village in Tailevu. Cuba, like Vunindongoloa in Vanua Levu, has been affected by the rise in sea level that led to coastal erosion and flooding of the village. Coastal erosion continues to take its toll on the village fishing grounds. The erosion of their coastal areas has led to some villages moving inland. From government's assistance, a seawall was constructed with the assistance of the Chinese government. Uh, see, we, we are standing on a reclaiming land. Uh, as you can see, uh, from where the uh, seawall is to that coconut tree. So all these places, all reclaiming land. Saying that, uh, you know, the difficulty is that, you know, during high tide, we can actually see the, uh, the water coming. Now we have uh, spring tide, and spring tide, that's something else. I'm just talking about the normal high tide. Yeah. So water comes right up to the uh, field. And it made it worse during the, uh, you know, any adverse weather coming across, in just a uh, storm or squally weather. So you can see the uh, where the uh, village hall is, that's where the uh, seawater always end up to. Yeah. This assistance has helped many villages of Cuba by empowering them. With the drains in there and the seawall, so we're quite happy, you know, with the current living at the moment. Yeah. So we're not going to stop there, but we'll try to continue the help that's been given to us and help the uh, environment by, you know, stop cutting the uh, trees on the edge of the, uh, the sea and the land. Uh, so we save that. So, you know, that serves two purposes, the uh, sea spray protects us from the sea spray as well as the uh, soil erosion from the land back to the sea. Yeah. Uh, we all share uh, uh, the responsibility and we need to take ownership. And again, I plead uh, to all the people of Fiji, uh, including the private sector, the non-government organizations and civil society organizations, faith-based organizations, uh, we all need to be involved. Uh, disaster affects all of us, likewise the effects of climate change as well, and we need to collectively work together so that uh, we can uh, reduce the risks involved and of course uh, enjoy life and most importantly uh, allow Fiji uh, to grow economically.